Ooh, good morning. <laughs> well, it's morning here. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks for watching, and thank you for everybody that's here this morning. Again, hopefully, I'd like to conclude what I started four Sundays ago, right? And uh, what's the title of this message? Storm Shelter, Part Four. So what does that what does that mean? Storm shelter. Uh, like I just told the congregation here earlier, but I want to recap a little bit this morning before I, st uh, I continue. And uh, this message comes from where I read, and the Lord wanted me to read Matthew 5, 6, and 7. We read and reread and reread. And uh, through the years, I've noticed that what Jesus was saying was actually the constitution of the kingdom of God. And so when you read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, uh, I believe that if you apply that, that is what God desires. And so in order to, to make it uh, in life, when there's a storm coming, and we know that there's always storms that comes, right? Because that's the Lord allows trials to test our faith. And when storms come, the Lord wants to know what's inside. And the way to overcome storms is exactly what Jesus says. So there's two ways of doing it. So in order to overcome storm in this life and also to uh, prepare us for the future, which is eternal, the Lord says this in Matthew 5, chapter 7, verse 24. And this is key to this message. Very important to learn. I've been saying for these last few weeks that if you apply this, and if you read and reread chapter 5, 6, and 7 all the time, quite often until it gets into your spirit, then because of that, when you go out and you live your life, and when you walk the, the earth, you walk in town, whatever, you will automatically apply what you just, uh, just read, or you read, because it will be in you. It's probably one of the most important teaching or preaching messages that I ever did. It was really God is preparing his saints. He's preparing his saints. And like we said earlier, uh, Pastor Helen was saying about shining our light. Uh, and it involves this. So Jesus said this this way from the New Living Translation. Anyone who listens to my teachings teaching and follows it, it is wise like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in tyrants and, and torrents and uh, blood, uh, floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on the bedrock. So you want to be there, right? So Jesus, what he's saying, he says, everything I just shared with you, if you apply it, then you will be solid, on solid ground. The rock is Jesus and his precept. It's his word, right? But then he says a warning here. Very important for us to notice. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it, it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse and with a mighty crash. So you don't want to be there, right? So all of us, you know, sometimes we wonder, we wonder why is this storm taking so long? Well, could it be it's because we haven't applied one place that Jesus forewarned us in the past to not go in, to not live in, right? Because it, it covers he covers all aspects of life, and uh, and you know, I, I it, we, if you would go home and read it, you will realize understand. Because I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's just that God had Jesus had some precepts that if you want to live a fail-proof life on the earth, if you apply everything that He says, I'm telling you, you will live the victorious life that He said He shed His blood for. But you have to apply it, and many saints don't. Many saints don't even look in the word. They don't even they don't even read the word. And reading a word and understanding the word is key for living our Christian life. So uh, if we fail, it's our fault. And then uh, in First Timothy, Paul says this: Do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. See, so you have to train yourself to be godly. This is why these messages are so important, because we're training ourselves to be godly. Physical training is good, 
but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. So you're being prepared for eternity, and you have to prepare yourself for now. And then also what I'm sharing, hopefully the last one, you know, on this teaching message, is that whatever we sow, we reap, right? It's a spiritual law. And we don't realize it until we think about it. There's everything we sow, we reap, right? So, and Paul, again, in Galatians 6, 7, it says, Don't missile, you cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting, everlasting life from the Spirit. So we, if we want to live the fail-proof life, we have to apply what Jesus says. And uh, I, I shared last week, and I'm not going to name names, but, you know, it's not how we start a race that it's important. Many saints um, right now, without going in names, they started good. But lo and behold, after they die, we hear and see stories about, and true stories, genuine truly confirm things that they did in their life and they we all thought many of them we thought they were like okay and then only god knows where they are but they didn't finish their race good they left a legacy of despair and stuff right well let us not leave that in our own walk with god let us all all pursue holiness pursue godliness train ourselves good to be the perfect witness for Jesus because people are looking right people are looking so I, I don't want to go too much in the past uh, last week I covered uh, six things and I'm not going to read it because I want to start and finish this message but I covered how we need to keep our oaths meaning uh, if you look at uh, these uh, the, the scriptures uh, Jesus is talking about keeping an oath. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Very important. When you make a promise to somebody, keep it. Because God, you know, I'm telling you, God, what you sow, you reap. So it's very important God to God. Then the second precept I shared about retaliation. When you're insulted or somebody attacks you, Jesus says turn the, the cheek, right? It says to apply that. And it's the hardest thing to do is to apply when somebody wants to hurt you. Hurt you but Jesus is very and wants to you know, he wants to take advantage of you. You have to use your wisdom, and the thing is, no retaliation. You pray for your enemies, you do good to them, right? So I shared about retaliation. Uh, number three, loving your enemies. Very hard to pray for your enemies, but Jesus expects us to do that, right? Not to talk against them, but to pray for them. Very important, because God listens. God pays attention. Remember, Jesus says, if you do this, even though it's hard, I'm telling you, you're going to live the blessed life. So you watch what comes out of your mouth, right? Number four, giving to the needy. He covered the needy. And then he covered in, uh, you know, that prayer, that place where God, Jesus says, uh, the disciples want to know uh, the prayer. They want to teach us to pray. And Jesus teaches us to pray. But the thing is, intimacy with God. Intimacy with God is very important to live the blessed life. So that God, you want a connection to Him. And then finally, fasting. And I share how fasting is another way of actually dying to self. Dying to self and uh, living for God. When you fast, it's not really for you. But it's more for situation maybe. Yeah, situation you're passing through. But many, God honors people that fast. Because usually people fast for nations. They fast for people. They're ready to sacrifice themselves for the loss, and God loves that. And, you know, so so far what I've been sharing is all about, it's about for now and eternity. So everything that we do in life affects us now in our walk with God. And you can always trace it back. If you're going through something and something is taking a long time to resolve itself, you have to go back to what Jesus says Am I truly applying what Jesus says in the Constitution? I call it the Constitution because it really is. It's the, the kingdom principles of how it is. How do you act uh, as a citizens of heaven in the kingdom of God? 
under God's care, and he shows us how to in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. So, um, so I, I continue with this uh, this morning. In Matthew chapter 6, and uh, we'll see how far the Spirit of God carries us. Oof. <laughs> this is a big one. Now, I'm talking about victory, right? I'm talking about living a life of victory on the earth. And so Jesus says, so this is fail-proof living. If we applaud this, I'm telling you, God pays attention and he will bless us for us. So Jesus continues in Matthew 6, 19. Don't stir up treasures here on earth. Where moth eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven. So focus on heaven. Where moth and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. So your focus is always kingdom bound. Your focus is in all... Always to please God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's always to, 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 it's not, you don't focus on money, you don't focus on, you focus on God. What does God want me to do? How does God want me to release finances? So this is where Jesus is going. Your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. So God here Jesus is speaking about money here, right? Now, I, I could go in details right now. Jesus is talking about light and darkness, right? But when your, uh, your eye is healthy, meaning your focus about finances and all that, that's what he's talking about, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep is that darkness is? No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. So what is he saying? Well, without going too much in details this morning, if you look around you in the world right now, everything resolves about money. And I'm not going to go in details how evil there is, but let me tell you, there's a lot of evil. There's a lot of evil because it's all about money. And even Christians are caught up in that thing too. Because they're afraid of give and they're greedy, whatever. But when we're not greedy and God sees that, then God, you know what God does? He can open the heavens for us. He can open the heavens for us. I literally actually saw this. God reminded me. Uh, I did something this week. And uh, we, well, me and Helen, we did. Uh, no, we, are, we love to give. And again, I touched on that last week, but I'm telling you, I'm just showing you how God, you want to live a very prosperous life. Oh, we don't live for prosperity, but God takes care of his sons and daughters. And so uh, we get deals. Suddenly you need something. I needed an air compressor. Lo and behold, I've seen it with many stuff, hey, Helen, through the years. Suddenly I'm doing construction. Well, I need a, you know, uh, you know those those chop saw with the stand, well, lo and behold, half price. So I bought it, and uh, my precious wife wanted my, me to renovate the house, and I had the tool. I paid half the price. So suddenly, I, I'm fed up of having this little compressor at home, and, you know, at 40 below or 30 below, it's pretty high. There's a little tube there, and you go there, and I keep losing air in one tire. I don't know why. And so, and I freeze, and I, you know, you know, and, and so I have to start in the garage. And anyway, it's a long story, but I bring that outside, I put it there, and I freeze, and I go, shh, that pressure goes down. Then I have to wait, wait, and then put more air in. Okay, so after a while, it gets aggravating. I told Helen, I says, I need an air compressor. Well, lo and behold, I look at the sale of Canadian Tire, half price. Well, actually, uh, it was $399. I paid, uh, I, I paid $169. For the thing, right? So 400 bucks. And so everything, and just, to, just to say, I bought everything. I see 400 bucks on all the equipment. I paid less uh, less than 50%. I, anyway, so I, I'm just saying this because if you take care of God's business, then that's what Jesus is saying here. You take care of God's business. Don't let money be your focus. 
And just concentrate on the kingdom. And if you do, then things happen. You don't you do it because you love God, right? <laughs> we give because you love God, and you just like and there's so much freedom in that, right? And so it's it's awesome to serve God that way. But Jesus gave a warning. If, the, if you focus on money, and this is the key thing because many Christians are focused more on getting from God than giving to God. And you don't do that for that. You just do it because then darkness comes in your heart, meaning you're, you, 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 you can step, uh, let's say a Christian, somebody that says it is Christian, I'm going to give you an example this morning. Somebody says it's a Christian, and he lives or she lives for money, and then because of that, then they allow this this thing they do over time, so they don't spend time with their family. I'm just giving examples, right? So, or they they they, they want more, they want a promotion, so they step on their buddies at work and they 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 they, 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 they overstep their bound. Well, that's darkness. That's what Jesus is saying. Don't be like that. Don't allow darkness. Meaning. Being involved with evil ways of getting money and always focusing on money. And if you don't focus on money, you do it because you love God. I'm telling you, God will bless you. And that's what Jesus was saying. If your treasure is him, he is your treasure. You do it all for the kingdom. Then God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. I'm telling you, God will not. Uh, so then he goes on. Okay, so we're going to continue. Then he, he goes on with this in Matthew 6, 25. And this is the hardest thing there is. But I know you guys are tired to hear me, but I'm telling you, when I retired, and it's, man, it's been a while now, uh, I had this, this fear of not having enough. And this is for you there over there too. I had this fear of not having enough. And then I says, no, I'm going to give it all to you. I was still working. I says, no, I'm going to give it all to you. I'm not going to worry, and I haven't worried yet. And I'm living on half of what I had. Right? So Jesus says here, oh, where am I? <laughs> no, no, I, I know. Okay, so but it's a tablet. I press. You know when you press things, you should not press here, right? Helen gets in trouble quite often like that. <laughs> so Jesus says this. Jesus says this. If we just could get this. It says in verse 25, That is why I tell you, do not worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, is in life more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? This is how God loves you. Jesus is trying to make us see how God the Father will take care of us. If we could just get this, right? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? How many people out there worry about finances? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothes. Made their clothing, or yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wild flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry. See, this is fail proof living here, what Jesus is saying. So don't worry about these things, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominates the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Take note of what he just says. Seek the kingdom. Seek to please him. Seek to, to just, everything has to do with the kingdom. And is righteous, meaning to live right, to be right before God all the time, to apply the precepts of heaven. Of the kingdom, and I'm telling you, there's no way you can fail. There's absolutely no way. It doesn't mean you won't go through trials and tribulation, because we will all. But you will come out on the other side, always, always victorious. And believe me, 
it will not be as long as uh, uh, for some. Why? Because you stand on the kingdom principles. Because you apply what Jesus asked us to do. So don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. I live this. I literally live this. It took me a long time to live this. And I know many people in here live like this. But I'm telling you, it takes, it takes effort. It takes uh, intimacy with God. It takes completely trust in the, in the promises of God and His Word. And if you, if you stay in the promises of God and His Word, I'm telling you, God will, He always keeps His, always, always. It's to trust Him, right? It's all about trust. So these radical givers have learned to trust God with their finances so they no longer worry where the next dollar will come from. They have come to realize that God is their source and that the money they give, they give come, God will give even more. It will come. Their goal is to touch lives for Jesus. That should always be our focus. Just live for God and God will take care of the rest. It doesn't mean that you don't fail him at times, but you pick yourself back up. But you, God wants us to touch souls for him. Right? That's why we exist as a church. That's why here I'm in, I minister because I love God. And I want to see people touched by the Spirit of God and the love and to get saved, right? It's, it's the ultimate goal is to get people saved and to touch them and share with them how God loves them. They know God as good as a good providing father. They have learned to seek first the kingdom by touching lives for God. This is this is storm proofing. This is probably one of the greatest way of living life. It's like an adventure with God. I just like I keep I don't want to I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that there is a place we can all come to totally trust God. That's why Jesus says those who want to go inherit the kingdom has to be like a child. What does a child do? They completely trust God, completely sold off of God. And there's such a peace. If you're not there yet, I challenge you, just let go. Just let go of all your worries. Just live for God. Give what, God to what belongs to God. Just live for Him. Just completely get lost in Him. And then he will take care of the rest. It literally, what Jesus says is literally doable. It's not something that's not possible. It's true. Amen. That's what the kingdom is. And I don't know about you, but I want to, to live like that. I really do. And I, I experience more and more. Me and Pastor Helen, we, we, love, we love to go on mission. We love to go and touch lives, to pray on people, to do that. You know, Margot likes to do that too. Many here. It's so awesome to touch life for God. You just do it all for Him. It's called loving God, right? With all your heart, mind, soul, and body. Then I want to jump on this one too. Matthew 7, uh, 1. I, again, it's another one, a major one. This one here is probably one a precept that Jesus teaches here about uh, really uh, allowing God to be God with people. When some are so hard, it's so hard. You know, you know, the enemy that hates us. How many agree? The devil hates our guts. And so you will move upon people that are full of the devil, okay, and they will want to, to hurt us. Right? They will want to hurt us. This is normal Christianity. Uh, you're not sublime to it. You will be attacked. You will be mocked. You will be. And so Jesus says this do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard in which you will be judged. And why are we about the speck in your friends? So, so you, we tend to try to find specks in people's uh, lives. But Jesus kind of reviews. I love it when he says that because he says, And why are we about the speck in your friends? I mean in this little tiny minuscule fault that somebody uh, you think has. When you have a log in your own. Right? So God is saying, you have to look at yourself. How can you take a saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your eye? That's why it's so important to search your heart. 
Because it might be if you're caught up in a storm, or when you get caught in a storm, might be, might just be you've judged somebody that this their little fault is small compared to what you have. This is what Jesus is saying here. So we have to come and see ourselves as we are. And we always measure ourselves with the Word of God, right? Because the Word of God will show us stuff. And sometimes the preacher, and many times the preacher will, you know, touch on subject, and suddenly somebody says, well, you know, he preached against me. Well, it wasn't me or it wasn't us. It was the Spirit of God pointing the finger, right? Because when there's a word comes out, it, it, it creates a change there. It creates, you have to deal with it. And so it can either take it the word or, 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 or push it away, right? <laughs> but we need to take, I don't know about you, but I want God to expose my weaknesses, my, 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 my failures, my bad character, so that I can get better. And this is what Jesus is saying here. Apricots, first get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on, uh, on people who are unholy. Don't trade your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. So here Jesus is dealing how we have to humble ourselves and make ourselves, even though even myself, I'm a minister, I've been ministering for a while, I'm just a pastor. I'm just a man that God uses. I'm not better than anybody else. Some might think otherwise of, you know, in their own ministry, but we're all uh, human and we all have faults and God is working in us and God expects us to see our faults and uh, sometimes uh, our faults will be exposed by uh, me. This is how God uses my... Somebody will sh tell me something and I will react a certain... And suddenly the Spirit of God will show... Oh, and then I will feel bad because I know, wow, I've, I've, I've lost this one. <laughs> now me, it's impatience. And so you will put people in my path that causes me to be impatient, like while well, driving or the grocery store. Or, and so I'm getting better at that one, right? So, but the thing is, eh? the, do the dog, yeah. Oh, the dog. Don't mention the dog, dear. <laughs> you had to mention the dog. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> we had the dog at our place yesterday too, and the dog wants to play, and he's still a he's big dog, and he loves to play, and he looks at with his little bit. Please, he puts his snotty bone on my thing, and it's all slimy there, and I just like, what do you want me to do with this? I said, you want me to play with the, the bone? I'm not playing with the bone. Anyway, the dog. And the fur and okay, Lord, I know I have to deal with this too. Okay, but you get what I'm saying, right? You get what I'm saying is that we need to look. Jesus is saying here, you have to learn to look at yourself, to see yourself as you truly are. And you know, I keep re saying it, but it's really nice. Because, you know, God God knows everything about us, right? He knows everything. He knows our thoughts. He knows our heart. He knows our past, present, and future. He knows everything. He knows our deep thoughts. He knows everything about us. But you know what touches God the Father's heart more than anything else? Is when we admit we're wrong, and we admit we are far from being perfect, and we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and then He lifts us up, right? And so God, if... If you want to please God more than anything, don't be an hypocrite. Just be honest with God. And I'm telling you, God will honor that. He'll honor your honesty. And be honest with people. When you hurt them, you say, hey, I was wrong. You were right. right? It's the hardest thing to do, right, dear? <laughs> Each one of us, as couples, it's like, you know. But... Uh, you guys, yeah, you guys are married, right? So you know what I'm talking about. So we all have our differences. And so, but anyway, we'll just change subjects. Subject. <laughs> okay, so where was I in uh, verse, verse 7? Jesus again saying, of course, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. 
For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. So here again is intimacy. This is what God expects, right? Your parents, if you parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give, give good gifts to those who ask Him? If you want to touch God, again, another way of touching Him is that put Him in the picture. Put Him in the In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. It says in Proverbs, right? So all every time, if you want to touch His heart, if you want to live the perfect storm sheltered life is that you don't shy away from asking God because when you do you're showing him that you're looking up to him for the for whatever your your need is not you're not looking at the world you're looking to him and if you do that he will be more than obligated he will want to give he will give you what you're asking for he will open doors for you he will whatever you're going through you will you know that you know that you will have it. It might take time, it might not. But God is like that. God the Father is like that. He's a loving God. He's a loving Father. That's what Jesus is trying to say here. Don't shy away from asking him. Almost done there. And then in, in verse 12. Hey, eh? <laughs> do to others whatever you would like them do to you. Again, the sowing and reaping part. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Now here Jesus is taking, he's sharing two things. Like I said earlier in the beginning of the series, this, this is, this, these are, are, you know, I don't know if you guys uh, understand, but I don't believe once saved, always saved, because I believe that uh, there's many warnings I could do. I could actually give you hundreds, at least a hundred. Well, I see this out of hand there, but uh, in the Word of God proves itself many times. Paul and Peter they give warnings. And even Paul says that I might be disqualified, meaning if he didn't, if he would, you would not apply the word. If he would become vicious, or you get became angry, or jealous, or, or uh, bitter, or whatever, then then if you started good, but then if you allowed the enemy's character to get in you, then God, his hands are tied. So this is what Jesus is saying here. So Jesus is talking about the life here now, and then the eternal life. Very. Very important. And if you love God, you will never, never act like that. You will repent. You will uh, ask forgiveness right away. But this is what Jesus is saying. So what is Jesus is saying? He says, narrow is the way. What does he mean by that? Well, the thing is, we live in a world where a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So if we start acting like the world, then we become God's enemy, right? So narrow way is uh, applying the kingdom principles, which is so hard. But the thing is, it's not hard really because we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of God to do what God has called us to do and to be what God wants us to be. It's the power of God. It's the power of God over sin nature because it's, it needs a, a law to fight a law. And it's the law of the spirit of life, uh, of life that overpowers the enemy's uh, the law. I don't know if you know, but sin is actually it's got a character of its own. You can see that in Genesis you can see uh, 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 God is telling Cain, uh, you have to master sin is trying to overcome you, but you have to uh, overcome sin. Meaning sin is a law. Sin is the character of Satan. Sin has a mind of its own, and God has given us the equipment to be able to overcome sin. Right? And so that's, that's how you know, some might be offended with that, but the thing is, that's what it is. I don't know. I said it uh, last week and the week before. There's three things. There's three things very important in our walk with God. If it will keep you forever and ever. The first thing is you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body. Right? The second one is you fear God. Not afraid of Him, but fear of hurting Him. Okay? And the third one, which 
is to me, this is what I apply. I'm talking about me, the fear of going to hell. These three principles control how I live my life, how I live and, and talk with people and hack with people. And when the Holy Spirit, I grieve him. Sometimes he'll show me, you've been wrong. You said this, that, you know, so I ask forgiveness. I move on. But these three things control my walk with God. Love for God, utmost. Love your neighbors yourself, right? The second one, the fear of God. And the third one, I refuse to go to hell. I watch over my heart daily. I analyze what I did in the day. And if I've done something, I repent right away. Because I refuse to go there. Because I know the warning. I have read the New Testament too many times. So the people can tell me, no, once saved, all who says no. I don't see that at all in the Word of God. I'm sorry, sir. Sorry, ma'am. But, uh, you know, the hyper grace, actually the grace message is the power. Grace is the power of God to overcome anything that the enemy puts in our path. It's the power of God within us. It's It has nothing a license to sin. It's, it's you know, we're not. And But that's, that, that's where I stand. And uh, me, I always prove the Word. Uh, I'm a word guy. I, I can't prove it with a word. And uh, sometimes the minister will share something. And automatically the Holy Spirit will say, what about this? Because sometimes some minister will say, well, this is this, this, this. Okay, well, okay, no. What about this and this and this and this? I have multitudes of scripture. Because I've read the New Testament hundreds of times. So it's in me. So I, the Holy Spirit right away, no. And so, you know, so you can't. So that's what God expects us, is to know the word inside out. That's why God, uh, many times in the past, has sent uh, JWs at my door. And I love them. But God, the Holy Spirit, they had all their little thing there. And the Holy Spirit went. And so they leave the house. You really believe I'm being deceived? Well, I'm sorry. There, His name one was Peter. He says, well, I'm sorry. Uh, and so the Holy Spirit, that's his job. The Holy Spirit then brings them to the truth. If they're sincere with their walk with God. But it's the... It's the Word of God. The Word of God is the most important thing. Everything you hear preach has to be confirmed in the red letter edition of the Bible, which is Jesus' Word. Right? Even, even you know, people take things out of context, you know, with Paul and Peter and all these. Everything has to go back. I, I've taught some preachers on some pastors on that. I says everything you preach has to be in line with what Jesus says because he has the last say in the Word, not man. But, the, but God himself, Jesus himself. So everything is back with Jesus. If not, if Jesus didn't mention it, if, if Jesus come against it, then it's wrong. I'm sorry you can argue till you know, unless you prove to me, but it's Jesus' word himself. He is the word of life. He is the one that brings the truth. And finally, the last one. Uh, no, that's where, uh, oh yeah. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as armless sheep, but they are really vicious wolves. This is what I'm talking about, false prophets. You can identify, identify them by their fruits. That is, by the way they act, can you pick grapes from torn bushes or figs from thistle? So what Jesus is saying here again, uh, I have want to close fast, but what Jesus says, if you want to live a, 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 a good life, a victorious life, then, then fail-proof living, storm shelter is the message that I'm preaching. Then you have to watch that there will be false prophets. Now you have to watch yourself not to be lured into with false doctrines. Because if you do, then you will walk a miserable life. You will walk a, de a deceptive life. You will, and it, sometimes it can take years and years to recover from that. So Jesus is saying this. He says, you can identify them by their fruit, meaning their character. If they're not, uh, the, the fruits means the, the, the fruits of the Spirit will are the characters of God, right? That is by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from torn bushes or figs <coughs> from trissels? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce a good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their action. So what Jesus is saying here, it says, In your midst you will see false prophets. In your midst you will see people that proclaim to be a believer. But you all along, they're there, they're planted, they're a tear. And because of that, watch for them. And you will know them by what they say 
or what they do. There's one thing that needs to be said here, though. We are not called to judge, right? The motive. We don't know what people do, their motive. Very important. Uh, I remember years ago when I first started with the Lord, it's, uh, uh, what's his name there? Uh, um, Jack Van Impe. It says you can't, we, we don't know why people do certain things. But one thing we're allowed to do is to, we can judge the fruits. And there's no good fruits. It's very important. Stay away from them. We try to minister to them, but don't allow them to to get um, um, to yeah right. Amen. And then in uh, in verse uh, 21, and I finish with this: Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. See, again, it's talking about salvation here. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me. You will break God's laws. So everything that Jesus says so far from chapter 5, Matthew 5, 6, and now we, we are at the end of 7. Everything that Jesus says, again, because it's very important, this, this message is all about walking in kingdom life. Walking and making sure that we're right before God. Starting our race good and finishing our race good. As we live on in life, we live for Him. Uh, what the, Jesus says to do, we do it. Very hard at times, we apply it. And uh, very important to always read and reread. I'm telling you, after a while, this will get in your spirit, man. You will automatically act according to what Jesus said. It will become normal to you, but you need to read it, right? So Jesus here is telling you, okay, so for this, for the time you're living here on the earth, I expect this, but also for the eternity, I expect this too. So there's twofold in this message that Jesus says. So in conclusion, Jesus said that the only, only those who, will, who do the will of the Father will be allowed to enter the kingdom of God. If you want to live a life of success, you must master what Jesus encouraged us to do in our day-to-day -day living. And if we learn to apply ourselves daily, then no storm that comes our way will ever succeed. It will not succeed. It will be impossible. God is a liar if it, if it doesn't succeed. If you apply everything that Jesus says in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, and you're really serious with God, and you deal with care, your character, you deal with your faults, you deal with everything, you say oh, in the kingdom, you love Him with all your heart, if you do all these things, it's impossible for God to fail you. It's impossible for God to allow you to go through things a long time because God will intervene in your affairs. You will settle in your heart. You will know that I have done everything possible, Lord. And I expect in your time, what this storm will be gone. Whatever you're facing. I'm telling you, I'm preaching this, I'm teaching this for your benefit, for people's benefit, for my benefit. I have to apply this as much as all of us. So if you learn to apply ourselves daily, then no storm can come or will ever succeed. Fail-proof living is possible if we apply ourselves. Every one of these precepts Jesus preached on the mount is attainable, or Jesus would not have told them us. So hopefully this message, you know, again, I'm just going to go back and I finish with this. Jesus says this. And I pray that all of you here and uh, everybody watching, that you will apply this because that's God's heart. Jesus says, and he means it when he says this, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. You want to be wise? Follow what Jesus says. Like a wise person who builds a house on the rock. The rock is Jesus. The rock is his word. Jesus is the word of God. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood water rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't. Everybody say it won't. It won't beat again. Uh, it, oh. it will not collapse. I don't know. When the rain, <laughs> sorry again. Floods comes and the winds beat against that house. It will, uh, it won't collapse because it is built on the bedrock. Do you want that? But he says later on, if we don't, it will collapse. 
I don't want any one of you, anyone watching, that you will collapse, that you will live the life that Jesus shed his blood. I'm telling you, Jesus shed his blood. He says I came, he came to give life and more abundantly. What does that mean? That means feeling loved by God himself, living the victorious life in the spirit, to be totally sold out for him. Enough so that at times you feel his love. I call it liquid love. We experience his glory this morning here in this church. God is real, is tangible. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. And I just pray for who's watching on YouTube. Hopefully everybody's saved here. Everybody's received Jesus as Lord, hopefully. But if you're not, if you have never received Jesus as Lord, that's why we go on YouTube. That's why, you know, with all things, if you would have known me when I was a young lad, I was so shy, so shy that my parents were afraid for me. And here I am preaching to people all over the world in this church. Well, I don't know where they are, but but it's amazing. It's amazing. But I do it because I love God. I love God. I just don't do it for fame. As a matter of fact, I just, but I love people. I love God. So if you have never received Jesus as Lord, maybe you're watching me and you wonder, what is he talking about? I'm telling you, it's very simple to get saved. Jesus shed his blood on the cross for you. Yes, for you, for all of us. Everybody, every one of us is born into sin, meaning the sin nature, the evil nature is in us. When God came to deliver us from sins, our sins, and to give us eternal life. He shed his blood on the cross. He died for you. You died for me. He died for us. And the gospel message is so easy. All you have to do is, is, uh, is you receive him as Lord. That's all. If you're honest with him, I'm telling you, God will change you. You will become born again. It's not a denomination. So if you're ready to do that, I challenge you to do it. If God is pulling on your heart, all you have to do is send a simple prayer. Say, God. I just receive uh, this information. I just realized that Jesus shed his blood on the cross for me. And I have seen what the Pastor Louis is sharing on that I want to live that life. And all I need to do is receive Jesus as my Lord. So I receive Jesus as my Lord, Father God. Today, I want to live for you from this day forward. And I thank you in advance. In Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. That's so easy. Like There's many ways of saying that. but It's so easy to get saved. All you have to do, it's only in a matter of if you really mean it. God sees your heart. You know what happens? God sees your heart. He gives you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and lives in you. You become a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. And then you're in an adventure, right? Can I begin? I have an amen for that. You yeah, have an adventure like you've never had before. Amen. Hopefully you do it. And we'll see you next week if you want to. God bless.